Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're taking a look at this radio from Radtel. This is the uh, RT730. It is a 10-watt dual-band VHF UHF radio. Uh, Radtel sent this out to us free of charge for our consideration for me to show it to you. And uh, that's what we're going to do here. However, there is no uh, expectation on their part about anything I'm going to say. Um, you know, whether they send me anything else or not, I don't really care. So I'm going to give you my honest opinion of this radio. And so far, I like it. All right, let's first talk about what's in the box. Well, first you have the radio. There, if you notice, is its FCC ID, B-Blood. Then there is the battery. This is 7.4 volt, 2500 milliamp hour. The uh, belt clip slides into the battery, no screws necessary. And then the entire battery pack slides on, clicks, and is connected. Let me get you some more light here. And it connects with that little click there. And you will also notice right here is a USB-C connector. And then that is just an LED to indicate that it's on. All right, next up, you get the antenna. This is the only antenna that comes with it. It is unmarked. It's basically a Nagoya 701 clone. Now, if you look at the top of the radio here, you can see our SMA male antenna port. Over here, the small knob is our... Uh, on off plus volume and the larger knob is an actual built-in VFO knob how about that so also in the box is a nicely done little manual you're gonna find almost no information about programming in here but it will give you you know all the information you need about operating also included is a uh, stand charger with built-in uh, AC. That's new. I haven't seen one of them around. And you get a nice wrist strap. All right, so taking a look at the uh, screen and front panel is going to tell you a couple things. Number one, it is dual watch. That's what this little, uh, whoops. This little mountain looking thing in there is, I mean, dual watch, it is dual watch cross band or same band. Very nice. And to go with the dual watch, you also have two PTT switches and two programmable switches. This switch down here on the bottom, a quick press takes you to uh, your weather frequencies, which you can scroll through with the lovely VFO knob press and hold that kills your squelch very nice now you have your a b switch here which if you watch that green arrow just sends it to whichever you know vfo is your main one and that is the only one you can program so you need to make sure you're paying attention and programming what's going on there now we also have the VM, which is between Channel VFO, mode. Frequency mode. frequencies, Channel mode. Channel mode, very nice. And then we also have our menu, okay. and you see we can go through all those options there. But what's really nice is some of the some of your big options here are right here on the front panel, like number four, power. So you just press and hold that, and it will take you right. To the power menu Confirm. and let you put it right in there same with squelch step dual watch beep vox yeah you, know, you can turn them all on turn them all off screen lock works really nice now not gonna work worth a crap in this room in this house in this valley attached to a little handy talkie so we can unscrew this And then I'm going to attach this adapter here, 
which goes out to my ground plane antenna mounted on the roof. This will get us much better coverage. All right, let's see here if we can reach these repeaters. WW8PR, testing, testing, testing. We reached that one. That one is about 10 miles away across the river in West Virginia. Now let's go down here to uh, B. That's on the national calling frequency. I'm going to change that. Two, three, four. Seems like I need to adjust the squelch on that one, maybe, huh? WW8PR is testing at this time. So that is all lovely. Now, here's something that makes it a little bit more interesting. This also has airbands. There is Heron Airport in West Virginia. That's a repeater. I don't know why I said with my airband. So is that one. There's Stat Medevac. Uh, Eddie Dew Airport here in Toronto. KHLG in Wheeling, West Virginia. Pittsburgh Unicom, 15, Pittsburgh Tower, 16, and then I also have uh, local City of Toronto stuff, 17, and uh, 2 Golf 2, which is uh, Jefferson County Airport in Wintersville, Ohio, one, and then we're back. So these are all programmed in here, and if I press and hold the scan button, you can see we're scanning right through them down there. However, my top VFO remains uh, steady so that is another really nice feature that makes this a great handy talkie for scanning while monitoring a particular frequency and um, I think it will be a good it will probably be a great handy talkie for satellite work however I have no experience in satellite work and can't really recommend one way or another regarding it. All right, we are going to do a uh, quick and dirty spurious emission test. I'm gonna be using this uh, nice little RF sample box that B Blood made for me. So let's get you back on picture here. Now just there's a little bit of noise right there. You can see it there as well, so ignore those. Those are not us. W, 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 8, PR, testing, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, so you can see we are at minus 47 dB. And if we come over here to this first, or second harmonic, rather, minus 51 Hmm. I can't. Okay, now we're minus nine. All right, there we go. Minus 46. Minus. It's going up to minus 80, so. It's very close. I don't have sensitive enough equipment right here to do the complete testing, but. In this quick and dirty testing, I would say it is uh, FCC safe. So programming this thing by hand is just like any other handy talkie. Menu. You know, you're just going to come down through here and you're going to find your options. Like, you know, I'm going to hit the wrong button here. Try this again. Menu. Okay. There we go. So we can come scroll down through here. Yeah, you're going to have to st set your uh, step for a repeater. These are your tones. Scramble. Not legal in the United States. I'm just trying to get to where my frequencies are. All right, so channel name, name edit, 
uh, LCDs, auto lock, box gain, box delay, warning type, TX select, F FMRX, store channel, there you go, delete channel, uh, function button one short press, function button one long press, function button two short, uh, long, you, you get the idea, Roger, power save, all that kind of stuff. Well, that's a pain in the butt. But, being a forward-thinking uh, company, our friends over at Radtel have included a programming cable. That's something you don't get with your bow things, is it now? Now, this may look like a standard uh, programming cable. However, it is not. Here is the ubiquitous bow thing UV5R with you know, your standard port. I think this is called a Kenwood K1 type port. Well, yeah, that's no bueno. So that's kind of proprietary, which is uh, just fine for Radtel. You know, it works with what they want it to work with. And you know what else works with this? Chirp. They have their own programming uh, application. It's a very early iteration and kind of rough to use. But this thing works great with Chirp. Um, you import the radios from it. I mean, you import the frequencies from your radio, make any changes you want on the computer, um, add new frequencies, delete, whatever you need to do. Then you just send it back to here, and it is a beaut. It just it just works. And like I said, this thing is big. This thing is solid. Let me, uh, let me take the adapter off here. We'll go back to putting the antennae on it. And where's the bow thing? I'll set it next to it so you guys can get an idea of the size difference. So like I said, this thing is substantial. From the tip of the VFO, we're looking at about 155 millimeters. Width from its widest point about 65 millimeters and depth with the belt clip uh, looks like about 48 without the belt clip it's like about 38 so like I said this is this feels good I like it so that's about everything I can tell you about the Radtel RT730 today it seems to be a nice radio. It's affordable at $49. Not going to break the bank. It is uh, supposedly IP67 waterproof. So, you know, if you like to snorkel with your radios, that's probably a good thing. The antenna that comes with it. What's it say on the end here? You can kind of read that. It says FM 136 to 174. 400 to 520 handy talky antennas are by definition compromised antennas you know two meters this is what 18 inches you have to compromise but that's what it is with HTs they're all like that you're not going to find a perfectly matched antenna unless you you know have an eight foot telescoping whip sticking off the top of your handy talky in which case go for it but all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Again, a big thanks to Radtown, and a big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.